go live. <clears throat> we are live. Yay! We're live. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And we're the Kitchen Queers coming to you from San Francisco, California, where it is sunny and clear and 78 degrees, 78 degrees in February. OK, so for all of our friends in the Midwest and on the eastern seaboard that are under 25,000 feet of snow, we apologize. <laughs> You can come and hang out here in San Francisco where the weather is fabulous. Sunny, sunny, sunny. So let's see who's here. Hey, look who's here. Rob from Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY. Great to see you, Rob. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. And Leanne's here. She just got back from buying wine. Sunday's okay. the Park Channel. Awesome. Great to see Cheers. you this afternoon. And hey, let me see. I want to make sure I say that right. It's Skirly. S. K I G R L Y. Ski girly. How do I say that? Ski girly. Ski girly. Ski girly. Is that it? I know her. She's uh, anyway. So ski girly. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out. I just wanted to make sure we got your name right. <laughs> so if I got it wrong, let us know how we should pronounce it. But thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. It's great to see you. And uh, oh, I get it. Okay. Ski girly is Mrs. Homer. That's Rob's oh, oh, lovely oh, wife. Okay. I thought I recognized her picture on, uh, I thought I recognized her picture. That's Bobby Joe. So, hey girl, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. And Madwood Barbecue's in the house. Hey, Madwood Barbecue, awesome to see you. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us, Rob. We really appreciate it. So what we've got going on this afternoon is, let's see, let me bring up some of my fancy banners from our stream yard. We're going to make, Da, 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 da. Low carb sausage balls. Woo, woo. And these are super delicious. And we're we're pitching it as low carb because, uh, well, it is. And it also happens to be gluten free because we're using almond flour instead of wheat flour. So not only does it cut down on the carbohydrates, but if you have people in your life that are gluten intolerant, this is a viable option for you to make some meatballs. And they're cheesy and yummy. And it's actually not hard to do at all. And we'll tell you every single detail of exactly how to make this happen and just so you know the cocktail of the week which philip is already well underway drinking is called the aqua mist and we'll tell you how to make this actually we're going to do this first because notice i don't have a cocktail yet so we're going to make one of these right away and get that going so let me make sure we check in with the chat again i love to say hi to everyone oh hello mr blue toys great to see you thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon it's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. So thank you so much for joining us. And Cuff and Stuff Barbecue in the house. Hello, Cuff and Stuff Barbecue. There we go. Hey, nice to see you today. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. They have a really awesome barbecue channel and they make some really super delicious food there. So if you're not familiar with their channel, be sure and check it out. And let's see. Oh, Ginger Snap Kitchen in the house. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ginger, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. We actually uh, saw Ginger earlier during Karen uh, in the kitchen with Karen's <laughs> channel live stream where she made clam chowder today. And that was a super awesome live. We were checking that out while we were eating lunch. That was a really fun afternoon. So thank you so much for joining us, Ginger Snap. We really appreciate it. And C Max in the house. Hey, Craig, great to have you here. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And Tom's Food Factory is here. Woo woo. Awesome. We have lots of our cool friends here this afternoon. It's so great to see everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. So just so you know, uh, we're using this stream yard. So when you see me looking off over here to this side, I'm using our workstation right here to manage these graphics that go up and down. And we're also going to do some fun stuff later, like, you know, split screens. There's a couple different ways you can do that. So you'll be seeing the things moving around and us playing with this software because it's really actually quite funny or quite fun to use, actually, is what I want to say. Anyway, so as you can see, Philip is drinking a cocktail. This is called the Aqua Mist mm -hmm. Cocktail. And I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. And we're actually going to do that first because I don't have anything to drink yet. And we've got a whole hour show to get through. So I, Daddy, needs a, Daddy needs a cocktail. So we're going to make the Aqua Mist Cocktail. And I will show you exactly how to do that right now so what we need is i'm going to ask you if you could please take the hurricane glass and put some ice cubes you got in it. it okay so philip's going to run off screen for a moment and fill up the hurricane glass 
with some ice cubes. We actually have two different kind of ice cubes in our house. We have ice cubes that we use that are big and chunky for shaking the cocktails. And then we have smaller ice cubes that come from a countertop ice maker back over here that we use for actually serving as the ice cubes in our drinks. So what I wanna make sure I do next is remind you that we're gonna be using a three part cobbler style cocktail shaker. And as you've often heard me say, or maybe not if you're new to our show, this is the vessel where the ice and the booze goes. This has a built-in strainer, and then this is the cap to keep everything all inside while we do a little shaky shaky. So the first thing that we want to do to make this drink is prepare our serving glass, and Philip has done that for us. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. With the ice cubes. And now I'm going to add some ice cubes to the cocktail shaker. So those are right over here in our brand new, really expensive, fabulous refrigerator. And this time, as you can see, the freezer in this refrigerator is in the bottom in a big drawer, and that's very different than what we're used to, but we actually kind of like it. And I like not having to bend over to get things out of the refrigerator. So just so you know, let me show you a close-up cam shot here. Let's go close-up cam. Okay, there. So now you can see the cobbler shaker is about halfway filled with ice cubes. So next, what we want to do is add some booze. So let me bring up really quickly the graphics that go with this recipe. Uh, the aqua mist ingredients, I'm going to read it off to you first, and then I'll make the drink. Uh, we have two ounces of gin, two ounces of light rum, one ounce of blue curacao, and two ounces of pineapple juice. And we're garnishing the cocktails today with maraschino cherries, very simply placed on reusable cocktail picks. And if you want to see where we got these reusable cocktail picks, there's a link in the description right below where you're watching this video, and it'll take you to the same place we bought these jeweled cocktail picks because they're really fun and we love to have reusable things now so we use cocktail picks every day and we were throwing a lot of stuff in the garbage so now we're just washing them every day so yeah so now we're going to try um to bring this cocktail together for you all so let me go back over here to the comment section let's see oh cooking and with steven and jack jacqueline are in the house hello great to see you suburban barbecues here hey jim nice to have you here today Cooking with Steven and Jacqueline in the house. Let me make sure I said, I think I said hi to everyone. Okay, so what we're gonna do now <clears throat> is I'm gonna mix up this drink. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two ounces of gin over the ice we just put in the cocktail sugar. So there's one, two ounces of gin, and then we're also gonna do two ounces of light rum. So let's go for this, one, I like the way the gin and rum work together. And I like the color we achieve on this right. drink. When we said aqua, we weren't kidding. This is a very, very colorful cocktail, thanks to the combination of the blue curacao, which I just used. And if you're not familiar with blue curacao, it's an orange liqueur. It tastes just like triple sec. The difference is it's got blue in it. Okay, and now we're going to put two ounces of this pineapple juice. Mm. I love pineapple juice. Now, we had a pineapple cocktail last week, mm -hmm, too, didn't we? We had a pineapple margarita last week. Which is also delicious. You might not think of pineapple as a flavor for February, but I like pineapple just about any time myself. So, okay, let's see. It's summer somewhere it's in February. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Okay, we're going like to put... It's cocktail time somewhere. We want to make sure we get the strainer on the vessel very carefully and the cap, and then we're gonna give this a very vigorous shake until the exterior of the shaker gets nice and cool. There we go, shaky, shaky. I always like to make sure I smile when I'm shaking because, you know, cocktails are supposed to be fun, right? So that didn't take very long, as you saw. Just need a, to, a vigorous shake, you know, shaking down here. No, 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 you know, get it up over your shoulder and give it a really good shake. So let's pour this baby. Ooh, that pretty color. This is a lovely aqua color. That looks amazing. Okay. That looks off. Oh, oh, so fabulous. So how fun was that having the close-up cam? Do you guys like having the close-up cam? We did that once before um, when we had our Valentine party over on the other side of the room in the bar. And then last week we were planning to use the close-up cam and then we had an equipment failure like two minutes before we were supposed to go live. Yeah, so, bang. you know, whoops, uh oh, well, that's what we always have to have. All the time. <laughs> that's why we always have to have a backup plan. So, anyway, ladies, gentlemen, and non binary guests, this is the Aqua Mist cocktail. Cheers, honey. Now, let me switch this back over to our full screen so we can see. There we go. Okay, there we go. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Mm, I want to taste this. Mm. 
Mmm. Mmm. This is really mm. delicious. You get a little bit of the botanicals from the gin mixed with the pineapple. And then there's the citrus element that comes from the blue curacao being orange flavored. This is really, really actually very delicious. Mm. And it doesn't taste, even though it's got a lot of alcohol in it, it doesn't taste particularly boozy. So you're going to have to be careful with these. Sneak up on it's going to be kind of like a hurricane, you know, where, you know, they taste so delicious and you can have seven of them and then you're going to have a really bad hangover. So we're going to time our cocktails. We'll probably mix one more of these before this broadcast ends, depending on how long this takes to unfold. We'll see how it goes. So let me check in with the chat one more time. I want to make sure we say hi to everyone. I see flour, eggs, and yeast is here. Cam and Teresa, great to have you with us this afternoon. And Mrs. Sonia Elaine is here. Oh, there's Tom's Food Factory. Okay, the chat is moving by really quickly. So there we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, see, every time I click something, it moves up two or three places. There we go. Okay, I wanted to say hi to Mrs. Sonia Elaine. Sonia, it's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And Ray Max Kitchen is Grill is in the house. Hey, Ray Mac. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate it. And Jerry Ellen's here from the Cooking with Neighbors channel. Always a pleasure to have you here. We saw her earlier as well as uh, Sonia and Cam and Teresa. And there was quite a crowd at Karen's clam chowder cook this afternoon. She really did a really nice job. So I don't see her in the chat yet. But Karen, you did a fabulous job this afternoon. We hope to see you coming through here a little bit later today. So let's see. What else have we got going on? Let's tip back over here. We're going to make low carb sausage balls while we drink these lovely mm. Aquamist cocktails. Cheers. I need another sip of this, baby. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So I did my best to make sure I said hi to everyone in the chat. If I didn't mention you personally, don't think we don't appreciate you being here. Sometimes the chat goes by really fast, as you saw earlier while I was trying to click on something, it moved up and clicked on something else. So I'll do my best to acknowledge everyone in the chat as we go along. So for now, let's take this stuff and I'm gonna just take it back over here for now and we'll come back and get it later when we make another drink. Yeah. And we can just pop that over there too if you're all right. Okay, so we're going to clear space so we can do the low carb sausage balls. Woo woo. So let me tell you a little bit about these. We've been making these for a while. We've actually uh, did a sausage ball recipe way, way back, uh, almost six years ago when we first started our channel. And those were made with wheat flour. And they were super delicious, but it, uh, you know, you use wheat flour and the carbs go way, way up. So we wanted to make sure that we found something that was low carb, but still super delicious that we could put together just as easily as the other recipe and then also, you know, make sure, make sure we can do it well enough that we can recommend it to you. So uh, I want, I see Frack Daddy Barbecue just popped in. Hey, Jared, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. And Bobby's in the house. Hey, Bobby, great to see you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Okay. So the low carb sausage balls, what we want to do first is I'm going to read you the ingredients while we tip over this way. Let me go over here to the banners and I'll put up the ingredients for the low carb sausage balls. So what we're going to use today is one pound of hot breakfast sausage. So we have Jimmy Dean's breakfast sausage. Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. You can use a pound of whatever kind of sausage that you prefer. We're going to use four ounces of grated cheese. And today we have Colby Jack cheese and the recipe that's below in the description area, it says cheddar cheese. So you can use any kind of cheese that's easily meltable that you like. You could use Gouda, you could use Monterey Jack, you could use Pepper Jack if you want to get a little more flavor up in there. So we also have two ounces of cream cheese. And I know some of our viewers are not fans of cream cheese. So if you don't like cream cheese, don't, no worries, use mascarpone instead. Okay, or mascarpone, as some people like to say. So you can substitute mascarpone for cream cheese in this recipe. We also have two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese, and that's the finely grated kind of Parmesan cheese. Let me show that in the close-up can really quick. This is the finely grated kind of Parmesan cheese, not the kind that shreds. This mixes into the recipe much easier than shredded Parmesan cheese. So in addition to that, we have one large egg, which we've already cracked in this bowl, and we'll show you what we're going to do with that. And we have one cup of almond flour, one teaspoon baking powder, 
and a half a teaspoon kosher salt. So those are the ingredients for this recipe. As you can see, it's only eight things. It's super easy to put together. And what we wanna do first though, is we wanna tip over here and we wanna prepare the baking pans first. Oh yeah, right. So what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna to have to do that over by the yeah, sink yeah, because we don't wanna get a cooking spray. But what's gonna happen is, let me have one of these. I'll let you take one of them over there and let me have one to show you. There we go. Okay, so we have our baking pans that fit perfectly inside of the June Intelligent Oven because that's what we're gonna be using to bake the sausage balls today is the June Oven. So let me check that out, the June Oven, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna be using the June Oven and Philip has gone back by the sink and he's gonna spray this pan with a little bit of olive oil cooking spray and then he's going to line the pan with a piece of parchment paper. We like to use cooking spray to adhere the parchment paper to the pan so things don't slip around while we're taking the pans in and out of the oven because that sometimes can be a problem. So uh, <laughs> it stays where it stays put. So let me give you that one to handle. So as you can see, uh, this one has been sprayed and the paper stays stuck in place. Super easy to pull off. And that doesn't take very much oil. No, just a tiny little bit. It's like a little dabble do you kind of thing. So. Let me make sure I said hi to everyone. I see Jeff is in the house from Wine and Dine with Jeff channel. Hey, Jeff, great to see you. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. We really appreciate it. And we are making low carb sausage balls in the June oven. These are naturally gluten-free and low carb because they are made with almond flour. So if you missed that at the beginning, these are made with almond flour. And we actually, if you have trouble finding almond flour at the grocery store, we've been ordering it from amazon.com and having it just brought right to the front door. And it's not any more expensive than at the grocery store and it gets delivered for free. So let's see, the next thing we need to go on to, we've got our pans prepared. And next, what we wanna do is tell you about the sausage, because that's something we did earlier off screen. We took the pound of uh, Jimmy Dean's hot breakfast sausage and we sauteed it in a skillet until it was fully cooked, but not it does not have a hard sear on the exterior. We just cooked it till there was no more visible pink meat left and we used the spatula to break it up along the way so it's it's a ground sausage -like product now and it's crumbly it's it's thoroughly cooked through but like i said we did it on a lower heat setting because we did not want to develop a sear on the exterior of the meat because we're going to be putting the meat into a mixture and then it's going to bake again and if you overcook the sausage on this project the end result will your know, sausage balls will be dry as a bone so make sure that you don't overcook your sausage. And I see Risa's here from Recipes with Risa. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Okay, let me see. I want to check one more thing. There we go. Okay, we're here. There we go. Okay, so sorry. I'm just checking in with the comments and making sure I'm keeping up on saying hi to everyone that pops into the chat room. And let's see. Then our next step is going to be, we've told you about the sausage. And then the next thing that we needed to do, let's see, we prepared the pans. Here's my script just to make sure we don't forget anything. So one of the things that's really important about this recipe is that it needs to come together quickly once we do the very first step. And so the first step is actually gonna be, we wanna put all three of the cheeses in this bowl. Right. Okay. So we're gonna put uh, this actually is, I told you earlier, there was four ounces of cheddar cheese. That works out to be approximately a cup. We divided the grated cheese into two parts. This is one quarter cup and the remaining three quarters of a cup is in a separate bowl. We're going to add that a little bit later. So for this first uh, large bowl that we're going to put into the microwave, we've got the shredded cheese, the cream cheese, and the Parmesan cheese. And this is all going to go in this same bowl together. And in a moment or two, this is going to hit the microwave oven. So we're going to set that aside for right now. Thank you so much for helping. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to whip this egg with a whisk. And what you want to do is just whisk it until the egg is thoroughly, the yolk and the white is thoroughly incorporated. And that around the edge of the bowl, there's some bubbles going on in your egg mixture. That is just gonna help give us a, a nice light fluffiness to the egg, and it'll blend in with the other ingredients a lot easier once we get to the point of putting everything together and stirring it all up. Mm. There you go. 
That was, let me make Profit. sure, let me show everyone how that turned out. Let's see if we can get this uh, closer to the camera. There we go. All right, this one? That one is the close up cam. So it's not, it's not wanting to no. focus, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, it's got bubbles all over the top of the it's egg frothy. mixture and it's nice and frothy. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So uh, now you can set that aside. We can set that aside over here. Now we do our dry ingredients. And then the next thing we're going to do are the dry ingredients. So what we need to do next is we're going to add the almond flour first. Let me take that off your hands. And then we're going to add the kosher salt and the baking powder. And then you just let me have those. And then uh, Philip is going to whisk the dry ingredients together. Not quite as vigorously as we did the egg because otherwise it's so no they just nowhere. you just need to make sure you get everything blended up it's uh you know uh, the, it you all comes you want together to distribute quite the baking powder and salt in the uh, exactly flour. yes that's exactly right so okay. hey baking divas in the house hey Yay! baking diva great to see you thank you for coming to join us today we really appreciate okay. it and everything shakes is in the house oh. hey everything shakes nice to see you today thank you so much for coming to join us we really appreciate it so we're making low carb sausage balls and we have our large bowl here that's eventually going to become our final mixing bowl has three different cheeses it has a quarter cup of the grated cheese the cream cheese and the uh, parmesan cheese if you're not a fan of cream cheese you can use mascarpone instead so we're going to this is the next thing we're going to need so now we have our dry ingredients in here which are the almond flour the baking powder and the kosher salt and then here we have one large egg that philip whipped up with a whisk so those elements are all ready to go our sausage is pre-cooked and it drained in a colander so we've got all the grease to come out of it and we'll just scoop that grease off and put it in the recycling bin later so all of our elements are ready and it's important that you have your mise en place ready because once this comes out of the microwave and this cheese is melted we need bang, to add bang, bang, bang. Yeah, we need to add the other ingredient ingredients quickly and incorporate it all together before the cheese gets too cool otherwise it won't coagulate enough to hold together so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pop this baby in the microwave let me hold it up to the close up here. we're going to pop this baby in the microwave right over here and philip's going to put a cover on it because sometimes when you put cream cheese because it's so wet in the microwave it tends to explode so we're going to go on 50 percent power this is a 1250 watt microwave oven we're setting it at 50 percent power and we're going to go for 80 seconds and we'll see if that's melty enough if it's not we might zap it for another 10 seconds or so so let me come back over here to this can so we can see over there to the microwave. Hey, Brian's here. Brian Strong. great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate it. Awesome. We have so many of our friends here this afternoon. That is great. So let me make sure I've said hi to everyone in the chat. I believe that we have. Yes. Okay. So we're kind of caught up on the chat. So right now we're just melting the cheese. And when that comes out, it's going to be time to put all of the other ingredients together. While we're waiting for that to happen, can we please preheat the oven to 400 degrees? So Philip is preheating the June oven to 400 degrees and we're just using the basic bake setting on the June oven. So it's just set to bake at 400. We like using the June oven for this project because <clears throat> these little pans hold just the right amount of meatballs all at once. And the oven is so well insulated that it doesn't make the whole kitchen get hot. And since it's 78 degrees in San Francisco today, it is sunny. And for us, 78 is warm for San Francisco, especially in at the end of February. So uh, okay. we're going to preheat the oven, and this is going to pop out. And when this pops out, we need to have our big spoon ready. Do you, are you going to need hot pads to get that out? That looks pretty good. Looks good. That okay, looks yeah. pretty good. Okay, so Sorry. you want to be careful when you stir this because sometimes, see what I mean? There we go. Sometimes the cream cheese gets a little temperamental. It's and sprayed a little it, right there. Yeah, right? it's sprayed a little. Let's see. That's okay. Okay, so we want to mix the cheese together really thoroughly. Let me go back to the close-up cam so everyone can see what you're doing close-up. 
There okay, so what's it on? What stages? What goes first? Okay, next, what goes in is the sausage. That's okay. all mixed up. Yep. That's good. That's good. So next, Philip is going to dump in the sausage that's already pre-cooked. Then we want to add the dry ingredients. Dry ingredients. So in goes the almond flour, kosher salt, and baking powder. And then you want to pour the egg over the top of that. The egg goes over that. Okay, that looks good. Okay. All right. Now you just want to start mixing all of that together. Yep. It's less of a stir and more of sort of schmoosh. a schmoosh. <laughs> you gotta, getting the cheese incorporated. Yeah, can be, you want to make sure you get, happen, but pull up the butter. cheese from the bottom of the bowl like what Philip's doing, and then you sort of want to schmoosh it all together. It takes a, a minute or two for it all to come together, but it will. We're schmooshing. We're schmooshing. Baking Diva says it's a deep freeze in New Jersey. Oh, my God. I yeah. know. We've been watching the weather report on the national news. And Fort Texas. Oh, my God. Oh, Risa says it's 79 is there, Arizona. So hey, she's got temperatures yeah. like we do. And let's see. Stephen and Jacqueline, it's 77 in the islands where they are in the Caribbean. <laughs> that sounds We awesome. love the Caribbean. We watch that. Uh, Caribbean life. And, yeah. yeah it's we a house that hunter show. show. And Sunset's in the house. Ooh. Hey, Sunset, great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to uh, join us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So we're right in the middle of preparing the mixture for the low-carb sausage balls. And Philip has just about stirred all of this together. That looks really good. That's how it's nice. supposed mm -hmm. to look. Okay. okay, now, the next thing to do, the last ingredient, is the remaining three-quarters cup of cheese. cheese. And don't forget this, because the last time I made these, I forgot to put this in. I had all the balls rolled out. He had them in the oven when he realized that he had to take them out. So. Well, they had only been in the oven yeah. for like 30 seconds, and I turned around and saw that this cheese was still sitting on the counter, and I was like, don't! Senior moment! So, let's make sure we get that grated cheese in there. And then you want to stir that into the mixture. And with this, this mixture, because the sausage is pre-cooked and because we're not using a wheat product for the flour element, you don't have to worry about over-mixing it and making the meatballs turn out to be tough. That's not going to happen with this recipe because there's no gluten happening in here. So that looks pretty good. We just want to make sure we stir all that great cheese into the mix. That looks lovely. It's coming along very nicely, honey. Oh, I see. Yester Kitchen in the house. Hey, Jill. Great to see you. It's 80 Hi, down in Southern California where she is. Yep, it's really hot here too today. It's 78. And for February in San Francisco, that is definitely hot. So thank you for joining us today, Jill. It's always a pleasure to see you here. Okay, so I see that looks really good. That's coming That's along good. very nicely. I think that looks awesome. Looks well incorporated. That looks great. Yep. Okay. Now, when you mix it at this point... It isn't. It doesn't really look like it's going to hold together, but it does. Yeah, well. So what we want to do next is uh, we're going to take our prepared baking pan and put it out here so you guys can see the close-up. There we go. Do you need a towel or something? Yeah. Okay. And next, we're going to use this scooper. This is a, a one and a quarter inch diameter scoop. It doesn't have a number or anything on it, so I can't. Does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't have a number, but this measures, I measured it earlier. It's one and a quarter inch across the bowl. And what we're going to do is use this to gather the meatball mixture, or I should say the sausage ball mixture. And then we're just gonna plop it right on up onto the prepared baking sheet. You don't need to roll it in your palms or anything like that. In fact, if you do that, the mixture is gonna fall apart. So let's have Philip show us how to make that happen. And I'm gonna have a sip of this gorgeous cocktail. Mm. So, mm. flat. Yes, you want to have a level scoop in your scoop and then just dispense it right out onto Ta -da. there. That's perfect. So, if you find that the edges look a little rough, you can take your finger and tuck them in. But it's okay if these look a little on the rustic side. So, let's go three this way and five that yeah, way. Okay. So Philip's going to get busy working on these. Oh, there. Thank you, Brian. Brian, this is a 32 millimeter scoop for those of you that are using metric, just so you know. Thank you, Brian, for that information. I should have looked that up. I do neglect to consider sometimes that we have people in other countries watching our show and they don't measure things in inches like we do. Why America US. doesn't go metric? I don't know. Ten, base anyway, 10, thank you very it. much, Brian. So <laughs> Philip's going to continue scooping out level scoops and then just dispensing them out mm -hmm. onto 
the prepared baking pan that we sprayed with olive oil cooking spray and then lined with a piece of parchment paper. That's our favorite way to do it because it keeps the parchment paper from slipping around. And I've also noticed sometimes in the oven, the parchment paper, if it's not sprayed to the pan, can actually lift up and push your food in different places or have things run into each other. So this is the way we've always done it and we find it works really, really well. So, oh yes, I totally agree. <laughs> Rustic is a culinary term for messy. Absolutely. <laughs> so if, you know, that's, we can always pass it off on rustic. Actually, these don't look really messy at all. They look actually quite neat. You're doing an even better job than what I did when I did it last week. We always want one piece of advice. I'll give you those of you that are doing uh, your own channel. And if you do live streams, uh, it, my idea just went right out of my head. Practice before you go on. There we go. That was it. Okay. <laughs> Practice first. You know how there's uh, the saying of you never make a new recipe for company? Yeah. <laughs> we operate the same way when it comes to our show. We like to make sure we've made each recipe we've done at least a couple of times first. Uh, so, you know, we can be confident that the results come out consistent, as well as that we like to have a little practice before we go live with a food video. Because, you know, it could always turn into an epic fail. That all happens to all of us sooner or later. And there we heard the jingle noise. Yeah, That's the June ready. oven telling us it's at temperature and it's coming in right about perfectly for when these are going to be ready. Uh, okay, let's see. I was, there we go. Okay, we tried to go metric in the 70s, but survey says, <clears throat> that's what Jill said. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I remember in high school that they were teaching metrics and we were like, you know, what's this yeah. stuff? 10, 100, 1,000, not, let's see, 12. Um, 51. Wait, what? Daddy Dutch is in the house. Hey, hey, Ken. Great to see you. And he says, it's about time Philip put some work in. Hey, <laughs> he actually does lots and lots of work behind the scenes that you never makes it to the live stream or on our filmed videos. But I couldn't do anything that I do without okay. this guy. We are so, going to put them. Okay. These are done and they are going in the oven. So we managed to get 15 onto that first tray. This recipe, this mixture will make approximately, uh, we want to go for 20 minutes. This recipe makes approximately 24 to 30 finished sausage balls, depending on, you know, how full you stuff the scoop. And then we put them in the oven. The oven was preheated to 400 degrees and it takes 20 to 22 minutes. So we set the timer for 20 minutes and we'll check in 20 minutes and see what the results are. And if they're not quite brown enough to suit us, then we'll let them go for a couple minutes more. So thank you so much for joining us, Kent. It's always a pleasure to have you here in the chat. We really appreciate it. I miss seeing Kent on Thursday nights on the Hot Seat Show. We were big fans of yeah. that show. And it's, it's also Rob from Mr. Homeowner Channel has done an excellent job taking over that show. And he's had some great guests and they've been doing some really fun stuff. But I also miss seeing CJ and Kent every week on that show. So we've just got to turn in it was to fun. all the other things that they do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jerry Ellen. She says we're a really nice couple and we're so kind to each other. Most of the time, that's true. And no. not always, but you know, everyone <laughs> has their moments, right? So yes, Mr. Homeowner, we totally dig your channel and you've done an awesome job taking over the hot seat because Kent and CJ were a hard act to follow and you've made it your own. So kudos to you. It's a great show. So if you haven't seen that, it's every Thursday night on the Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY channel. Be sure and check that out. So, okay. Philip is busy working on the second batch, and I'm busy sipping this gorgeous cocktail. Mm. Mm. This is so delicious. So for those of you that missed it, we're drinking a cocktail that we named the Aqua Mist cocktail. And this drink has gin, light rum, blue curacao, and pineapple juice. And I suspect we'll probably be mixing another one before this uh, broadcast yeah, ends well. because his is getting a little low over there. So we'll show you how to do this one more time if you missed us mixing these cocktails at the top of the episode. One of the things we're wondering about is that uh, we did our live streams at noon Pacific time for so long, which was 3 p.m. Eastern time. And then uh, a few weeks ago, when, after we came back from a short break that we took, we decided to go a little bit later at 4 p.m. because we've had a lot of input from many of our fans that it's easier for them to watch a live stream later in the day or in the evening rather than in the middle of the day, like a nooner. So I don't know, how are you guys feeling about this 4 p.m. time slot or maybe 7 p.m. where you are if you're on the East Coast? 
uh, let us know what you think about that. The only thing we have to go by other than the feedback that people give us directly is what the numbers look like. And what I can tell you is the later afternoon and evening live streams that we do, we get more than double the watch time and viewers that we usually used to get at noontime. So for, from our standpoint, we want to try to put you know, out our content to reach as many people as possible. And that's why we went for the later afternoon time slot. So let us know what you think about that. And I see Cooking with the Crazy Pop is in the house. Hey, Crazy Pop, great to see you today. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. Philip is busy putting together the last of the meatballs. Okay, well, Ginger Snap says anytime works for them because they are unemployed. Well, we're semi-retired, so we can kind of do whatever time frame we want to. Originally, when we picked the noon time frame, it was primarily because it was easiest for us to occupy the kitchen space because those of you who followed us for a while know that Philip and I live with other people in this house. And so when we take over the kitchen all afternoon for a live stream, we have to uh, employ the cooperation of our other housemates because no one can come in and out of the kitchen while we're doing this, which can be kind of inconvenient for everyone in the rest <laughs> of the house. <laughs> so anyway, we've done our best to um, pick a time slot where it kind of fits for everyone and people can live without getting in the kitchen as well as uh, that there are a lot of you available to watch the show because, you know, live feeds are, we watch lots of live streams on the replay afterwards when we miss someone when they're actually live. But as you can see, you know, participating in the chat, and uh, is a really important part of the live stream experience for the viewers particularly. So Daddy Dutch says later is good for him. So we also uh, did a Halloween, or excuse me, a Valentine cocktail party a couple weekends ago, actually last weekend. And that we did at six o'clock in the evening, which was 9 p.m. Eastern. And we actually got triple the number of viewers and watch hours that we normally have for a midday live stream. So doing something later in the evening also seems to work pretty well. So Philip managed to use all the mixture with 15 sausage balls on each pan. So we did get a total of 30. So two and a half dozen. That's a nice amount from this recipe. And these over here, oh, these are well underway, but we still got 15 more minutes on those babies. So let me come in here and just make sure we've said hi to everyone. I think I'm catching everyone on the way through the chat. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. So let's see, let's go over here, let's go over here. So right now we have the low carb sausage balls. Batch number one is baking in the oven. Philip has prepared batch number two, which is right here on the counter. I'll have to hold these up because my graphics in the way. So these are ready to go. And let's give, let's give those babies their own close up. There we go. Here's a glamor shot of the prepared sausage balls. This batch is ready to go in the oven next. So let's come back over here. There we go. Okay, thank you for taking care of that. I really appreciate it. So <laughs> Philip's just doing a little tiny bit of tidying up in the background. Things are real clean. You get to see uh, more of what really goes on when we live stream from the kitchen than when we sit over in the dining room. Because when we're in the dining room, we always have to make sure everything we need is right nearby because we don't want to have to get up and leave a live stream in the middle. So this is much easier working in the kitchen because if we forget something, we just have to open a door or a drawer and it's readily available. So thank you for tidying that up so nicely. So we're going to get all this tidied up. We've got some baking to do and we're going to get ready to make another drink because Philip's cocktail here is almost all gone. Okay. Thank you so much for cleaning that up so nicely. Okay. So let me get this graphic out of the way. So the cocktail we're drinking this week for I'm those like of you. I'm cleaning as I cook. I just wait till everything's all done and then I clean. So for those of you who are wondering what we're drinking this week, this cocktail we named the Aqua Mist cocktail. And the ingredients are two ounces of gin, two ounces of light rum, one ounce of blue curacao, and two ounces of pineapple juice. Mm. And this baby is yummy. I mean, this color is gorgeous. I think it is anyway. I love drinking blue cocktails. And this really tastes super yummy as well. I, mean, I want a house this color. I know. Well, actually, our house is kind of this really? color. It's, it's greener. I was going for this kind of color, but I went greener. Well, when we move to Palm Springs, we'll paint our house in Palm Springs this color. Because this, to me, says, like, poolside. And I think, you know, it, when you have a pool in Palm Springs, and how can you live in Palm Springs and not have a pool? It's 500 degrees every day. I think the pool should be painted. You know, the house should be painted this color. It's the color of well, the water like in the pool. Caribbean 
Or Hawaiian. Yes. And well, that, Stephen like, and Jacqueline cool. would know about Caribbean yeah. blue. That's for sure. Anyway, so that's what we're drinking. I'll mix another one as soon as Philip finished this is, finishes this video. Better hurry then. Let me check the comments. I want to make sure we are staying up to date with everyone. <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Your kitchen says, yes, move closer to me. Jill, we wish we already lived closer to you because we'd be doing videos with her every other week. I, I swear. She is so fun to hang out with and we just love, love, love the Yes, Your Kitchen show. And I see, oh, Karen's in the house. Woo, woo. Yay, Karen's in the kitchen with Karen. Great to see you, Karen. And let's give her a round of applause. Yes. Yay, How's Karen. The clam chatter? Yeah, the clam chatter episode today, Karen, was the bomb. You nailed it. She had a huge number of people in her chat. The chat was going by so fast I could hardly keep up with it. And she, Karen, you just did a beautiful job on bringing that together. And she works with her husband a lot of times. He stays behind the scenes and helps out with a lot of the things that need to go on on the screen. And we love it when couples work together because, you know, that works for us. So I couldn't do anything I do without this beautiful gentleman over here. So thank you so much for being with us, Karen. We really appreciate that. And you are welcome. We we met Karen when her channel started. It's been about six months. And I think we discovered her right when she first was getting started. And we thought, oh, she's going to make an impact. And she definitely has. Her channel zoomed up to over a 1,000 subscribers in a very short amount of time. And it's primarily because she's great and her food is awesome. So congratulations to you, Karen. You did a really great job on that live stream this afternoon. And we really enjoyed watching you make soup today. So these little babies are going to be ready to pop into the oven and if you missed the ingredients at the top of the show let me run down the ingredients of what's in these sausage balls again so these are low carb and gluten free and the reason for that is because instead of using wheat flour we used almond flour almond flour so sometimes called almond meal yeah sometimes called almond meal I mean, it's we the use same the thing. blanched version versus the unblanched right so uh, what difference does the blanched versus unblanched make? It's just the color of it, uh, isn't it? Yeah, basically, you, when you blanch almonds, you have a little thin brown skin removed. That's, basically, you know, yeah. so when, when it's unblanched, just has so so it's more fiber. I'm probably pretty sure because of that stuff. But, yeah. Um, so for the sausage element, we used this. Um, let me see. Let me bring in the close-up cam here really quick. There we go. Okay, let me hold this up to the close-up cam. So we use this Jimmy Dean Jimmy hot Dean! sausage. You can use whatever kind of sausage that you like. We should try chorizo sometime. Yeah, and make it even spicier. Whoa! I know, I love chorizo. So let me put this back here. We have a charcuterie drawer no! in the refrigerator, and that's for meat only. So we have a pound of breakfast sausage. We have four ounces of grated cheese. The recipe says cheddar. Today we used Colby Jack, a combination of Colby and Jack. You can use any kind of easily melted cheese that grates nicely that you want. There's also two ounces of cream cheese. If you're one of those cream cheese haters, no worries. You use mascarpone instead. And then there's two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. And that's the finely grated Parmesan. You don't want to use shreds. We use the finely grated because it mixes into the mixture much more easily. There's one large egg, a cup of almond flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And you really don't need any more seasonings than that with this recipe because the Jimmy Dean's hot sausage has a lot of seasonings and spices in it already. And so that's taking care of a lot of it for you. If you use something that's not quite so heavily seasoned, you might want to incorporate some Uncle Steve Hello. Shake. Hello. Uncle Steve Shake would be an excellent addition to this recipe, especially if your sausage isn't as flavorful as the kind that we're using. And I would use, since this is pork, I would probably use the competition pig powder mm -hmm. in this recipe. But you could also use the Spicy R. If you're not familiar with Uncle Steve Shake products, you can check them out. Let me see where. There we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, Uncle Steve Shake at UncleSteveShake.com. This is a blatant plug, even though we're not using uh, his products today. We love Uncle Steve's products, and every single one of the 10 flavors that he now has is awesome. We just got a bottle of the Smoke Bomb flavor, and it has smoked paprika in it, and it definitely has a lovely smoky element to it. So if you want to check those out, just go to UncleSteveShake.com. Let's check back in with the chat and make sure we said hi to everyone. Hey, Cooking with Rick is in the house. Hi, Rick. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. I think I said hi to everyone else. Uh, let's see. Um, well, 
Sundays with Heart wants to know why do we pre cook the sausage? Um, because that's what the original recipe said to do. <laughs> Actually, our other sausage balls that do not have almond flour, we didn't ever cook. But the how sausage long were those cooked for? Those cooked for this for about okay. twenty five oh, minutes. Yeah, right. yeah, they cooked for a little bit longer. It basically just gives the meat a head start. Is essentially what we're doing here, and we you get, get all this grease yeah. out. Okay, that's the other good reason. And even though, and so even though, um, the reason we didn't brown the sausage is so it wouldn't get dry because even now, if there's still grease in the sausage, it's getting released from being baked. Yeah, the par cooking it ahead of time gets a lot of the grease to release, so you'll have a less greasy finished product. But even so, these you'll see when they come out. If we set them on a napkin, it'll soak a lot of grease out of it. And they don't when you eat them, they don't taste greasy at all. No. But they definitely do admit some grease. Like we usually put these on a plate with a doily. And by the end of our appetizer session, the doily is thoroughly soaked with well, oil. It's like fries. You know, I mean, except these aren't fried. No. Imagine if they were that. If they, well, we could try that sometime. <laughs> Darnell is in the house. Hey, Darnell. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to join us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to have you here. We Thank you so much. You get batter and then fry. Well, that would be another way to elevate it to the next level, I'd say. Dip them in batter and fry, like like pancake batter, or like batter like we use for onion rings. Like onion ring batter, yeah. Yeah, so like a little, but a little heavier than a tempura batter. Or yeah, no. probably. Yeah, because it's probably. something to stand up. To. That's that's another. Uh, we'll have to but try that. The funny thing about tempura batter is it's really crispy. Even it's really light. It's really light and it's really crispy. But my experience is a lot of times it doesn't really stick to things very. Or, They don't really give it well when they're not cooked. So maybe rolling them in pan cow wouldn't be a thing that would work. I don't know. I don't think so. But then or if we put start putting wheat products on it, then we lose our gluten-free and corn flakes. Corn flakes. Corn flakes don't have any wheat products, do yep. they? I think that's one of the few cereals you can eat and not have to worry about. Uh, corn flakes? Rice checks? Okay, so I'm just checking on the rice chat here. Uh, Risa says she loves a little grease. Well, most of the time, we're not adverse to that either because we cook stuff in bacon fat all the time. Philip saves all the bacon fat from the bacon that we cook. Oh, really, for my mom. She did it all the time. And yeah, but we've got... A when I cook eggs, when I cook right anything here. in a pan, I use bacon grease. You know, yeah, just... this is our bacon grease right here. We save the bacon grease. And this tastes so delicious. I usually so am delicious. throwing a lot of it away. <laughs> Well, because we, we cook create, a lot of bacon and we create more bacon grease bacon, than we bacon, can actually bacon, use, bacon, but bacon, we bacon. use as much of it as we can. Yeah. So how are these doing over here? Okay, we've got four more minutes to go, and they're starting to look really lovely. Mm, it smells really good. I wish we could get a close-up cam over here. We're going to have to figure that out. We've mastered having two cameras using live stream, so we're going to try using three. But uh, we're going to have to. Well, it'll have to be the phone. It'll have to be lower. Uh, quality video and maybe a little choppy but you know yeah we'll, we'll see, see what what's happens. going on although there's a camera in the gym there is a camera there might be inside a way to actually the, use the June camera. oh well we'll have to try that the, you can see it on your phone yeah you can see it so on your phone it's in our phone we should so we it figure in. out how to bring it up on this yeah it's doable we're just gonna have to figure it out we actually learned how to use two cameras you can see we can do that here boop, boop, boop. And you can also separate the screen like this with StreamYard, and you can separate the screen this way, or you can change it to be this way. How fun is that? So then you can do close-up shots, you know, and for doing cooking videos, for those of you that are doing your own live streams, this is really, really a valuable tool. I think it really adds a whole lovely other element to the show to be able to have some close-up shots so people can see the details of uh, what we're actually doing. Cooking with Rick says, gay guys are the most creative. <laughs> well, I'm not going to disagree with that. We know plenty of creative heterosexual yeah. people. But uh, <laughs> that we have uh, the reason we identify as queer gay men is because, you know, queer people have just a little extra je ne sais quoi. You know We're what I mean? wild and wacky. Well, there's that. <laughs> we drink a lot. I'm sure they're queer they don't drink. And Jill's talking about childhood memories of glorious food. 
And, and she'd know a few things about that. Jill, if you want to share what your project is that you're working on, I'm yeah. not, not going to mention it because I don't have permission to do that. But Jill, if you want to share what your project is that you're working on in the chat, be sure and go ahead and do that. I'm sure everyone would love to hear about it. It's Jill from Yester Kitchen does really amazing stuff. We've been fans of hers for over two years now, and we just adore her. So yes, be proud and loud. We are, we are occasionally loud. We got this really nice comment. Someone said, uh, we did a blooper video a few months ago, and one of the commenters said, oh, Mitch, you're always so polite and reserved. I had no idea that you ever dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> ask this guy. Anyway, so, no, I, I can be very polite and reserved, but the truth is, in reality, He's a sugar pie. I'm, I'm a sugar pie, but I'm also, you know, kind of a little over the top sometimes. So, anyway. I use my temper a lot, so, you know, hey. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, I see. Daddy Dutch is going to Texas. He's going to Ooh. Galveston, and then he's going to meet up with Uncle Steve. How cool is that? Cool. I think they hung out once before, or maybe I'm thinking of when Kent, Kent and CJ were together a few months ago on a live stream, and I can't remember. I think it was because Kent came to California, not because CJ went to the Midwest where Kent is. I'm not sure about that. We'll have to let Kent fill us in on that. I have fond memories of Texas. I was in second and third grade in Texas. Me too. Really nice people. Love the weather. It was really lovely cool. in Texas. The weather was awesome. The people were so friendly. I lived in Mesquite, which is a little was northeast of Dallas. Forward. Great place. Oh, and we have so many people in the chat showing each other love today. That is so nice. Cooking with Rick is reaching out to Jerry Ellen from the Cooking with Neighbors channel. That is so huge. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Sundays with Heart says their whole channel is one large blooper. <laughs> I don't know why they keep saying that. I I thought they said something about that. Uh, maybe not the last time, but the time before that they're, they had a live stream that like went way off the rails or something. And it's like, I don't know what they're talking about. Every time I watch their channel, I find it very entertaining and they make fun food and they do interesting things. So I don't know what's uh, to complain about because I think Sundays with Heart is awesome. Okay. So Kent from Daddy Dutch Barbecue is saying that CJ and he are both going to Texas. Oh. To hang out with Uncle Steve. Cool. So how cool is that? We are going to be looking Party! for that live stream. I'm expecting a lot of fun action to be up there. <laughs> okay, so oh, right. there's the bell. Okay, here you're going to need. Oh wait, do you want the oven mitts? And we'll set that no, here. No, no, no. Wait, okay, that's probably better. Okay, let me get you. Give you this. I'll give you that. Here, let's. I'll let you pick it up with the pretty ones, and we'll set it on the ugly ones. Okay. So the first batch is ready to come out of the oven. How do they look to you? I only need one. You only need one. Those look good. Those yes, are the supposed to look. Okay, so the first batch is coming out, people. So here we go. First batch. Voila. Voila. And ladies and gentlemen, non-binary guests, we present to you baked low-carb sausage balls. Dun, 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 dun. Risa says, yay, food time. Yay, we agree. Okay, so these are going to cool just for a couple minutes on this hot pan. As well, you can see. another cocktail. Okay, we're going to make another cocktail. So what we need to do then is situate this, this off to the side. See, we have an empty glass here, and that's just not acceptable here at KQ. Empty cocktail glasses are just not okay. So we'll fix it. So we're going to scooch those okay. sausage balls off to the side for right now. And then we're going to mix up another cocktail. So Brian says that they're looking great. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate that. They, I can't wait to taste these. These are going to be so yummy. We've made these before, so we know how yummy they are. And Jill says, yum. Yes, you're right, Jill. These are definitely yummy. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, okay, there. Well, I think we're pretty good now. So what we're going to do next is it's going to be time to make another drink. I want to move my drink out of the way just so we can show off what we've got going on here in cocktail land. Oops. Let's move this off to the side. I'm going to pull this up a little bit closer to the front. There we go. Thank you very much for getting that ready. So let's go over one more time how to make the Aquamist cocktail. Philip's going to go fill up the cocktail glass with ice cubes. So we're going to wind up, I drank some of this, but we're going to wind up with this lovely blue colored drink when we're all done. So let me show you how to make this baby happen. Okay. First, what we're going to do is 
I'm going to take the cobbler style cocktail shaker, which, and that just means it has three parts. It has a vessel, a strainer, and a cap. And I'm going to fill this halfway with ice cubes. So let me just come over here to the freezer and grab a few ice cubes. That should do it. So let's show you this. We're going to wind up with the cocktail shaker being approximately half full with ice cubes, like I said. So there we go. And our serving glass is already prepared with ice. Okay, baby. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to use our jigger. And this has a one ounce cup on this side and a half an ounce cup on this side. So we're going to use the one ounce cup and we're going to put two ounces of gin in the cocktail shaker. Now I have speed pouring nozzles in these decanter bottles and it makes it so much easier and so much faster to pour the booze and it also helps cut down on some of the mess that making cocktails can sometimes make so now i'm going to add two ounces of rum so let's go in here for the rum we're going to do one two ounces of rum and we're going to do one ounce of blue curacao if you're not familiar with blue curacao it's an orange flavored liqueur. It actually tastes exactly like triple sec, which is also an orange flavored liqueur, surprise. Triple sec is clear and completely transparent. The only difference with blue curacao, truthfully, is that it's blue. And it can contribute to a lot of really lovely outcomes when it comes to colorful cocktails. So we have one ounce of the blue curacao, and then we're going to do two ounces of pineapple juice. So there's one. I'm just going to pour that. Okay, that's it for the pineapple juice. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we've got all of our ingredients in the shaker. And the next thing I want to do is take the strainer and put that on the shaker very securely. And the same thing with the cap. We want to make sure this is all nice and tightly together so when we go to shake it, it doesn't wind up all over the kitchen. Okay, so we're going to give this a very vigorous shake. I just love making cocktails. Okay. I love it when you make cocktails. Shaky, shaky. Okay, awesome. So let's get this second round poured. There we go. Okay, let's check this out. Ooh, Ooh lovely color. color. Hello. That is a beautiful, beautiful color. Ooh, sheer perfection. I nailed it. And so did you, because getting the ice right to be with the mix is kind of tricky sometimes. So, okay, there we go. This is the Aquamist cocktail. I'm gonna scooch this off Bye -bye. here over to the side for now. Okay, and there we have it. That's our cocktail for today. The Aquamist cocktail, isn't that pretty? That looks so, oh wait, let me get, let me give a, let me get a close up point on you. There we go. There's a close up of our cocktail. Woo -woo. Yeah. Lovely, lovely blue color. This is so pretty. And it tastes really good. It is. It's really yummy. Okay, so mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen and non-binary guests, this is the Cheers. Aquamist cocktail. Cheers, everyone. We hope you're having a great time today. We know we are. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. That tastes so, so good. Uh, Karen says she keeps thinking of the hairspray with the same name. Aqua, yeah. <laughs> Aqua Net. Actually, we have some in the other room. That's how I get when I do my hair and I get it to stand up really high. That's the product that I use. That old fashioned kind of hairspray that like our grandmas used in the 1950s. That there is no product other than Aquanet that can make your hair stand tall and remain totally immobile, even in the wind and fog in San Francisco. I think Aquanet hairspray is Awesome. My mom used Aquanet way back when. I think I think the people that I adults when I was a kid used Aquanet as well. Anyway, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sunset says they would love to have a shirt in the color of this drink. I'm pretty sure you could find it. We found these on Amazon. This turquoisey color in here is kind of the color of this drink. There's lots of uh, I don't. We buy a lot of clothes online. So oh my gosh, look what happened while I was busy babbling. Philip fixed us a plate full of these lovely sausage balls. Let me show you a close-up of that. And there we go. There's a close-up of the sausage balls. Yeah. Woot, woot. Now that they finished cooking, I'll take off this paper oh, and you see the whole shirt. 
Okay, yeah, because the, these shirts are really cool, actually, and we're covering up a good percentage of it with this apron. And our sausage balls are done. Now, these sausage balls are supremely flavorful, so you don't really necessarily need to have anything to go with them. But there's the paint splat shirt. So that's what the shirt looks like without an apron over it. And it's the same on the back as it is on the front. There you go. Very colorful. You guys know that we like lots of bright colors. So I've been looking when I'm shopping online for the brightest, coolest, most splashy shirts that we can find because we just love to wear splashy shirts. So, hey, I see Jill has to cut out on us. Jill, Bye, Jill. great Thanks to for coming see by. you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. She's got always got a busy schedule on Tuesday because she tapes a lot of her episodes in advance, and Tuesday is her filming day. So thank you for coming to hang out with us, Jill. It's always a pleasure to see you here. Okay, let's see. And uh, well, someone else, uh, Ginger is commenting about there's a studio line of hairspray products from L'Oreal. Really? I'll have to look when we go to CVS and see if we're we worth it. That. Yeah, we're worth it. Lori, I actually used to, when I used to color my hair, I used to use L'Oreal products all the time. So uh, let's see. Sundays with Heart says they're thinking of Marvin the Martian with these shirts. Oh, yeah. He knows what that's all about. Yep. You should watch those uh, cartoons all Saturday morning. The time. Okay, so these are the low carb sausage balls. Woo, woo, woo. So I say, let's give these babies a taste. What do you say? I like my ketchup, so that's what I put in here. Okay, so Philip put some ketchup in a bowl, and these don't necessarily need a dipping sauce because they're very flavorful. I also like to dip them in sour cream and just to give a little cooling element to the sausage balls. So let's give these babies a taste. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have mine plain. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. They are good. Mmm. Very yummy. Mmm. Really flavorful, too. They have a very nice texture. You'd have no idea if no one told you that this was low carb or gluten free. I mean, you, we could just leave all of that out, except for its search criterion, you know, so that's important. But They're crispy on the outside, mm -hmm. soft on the inside. Very crispy on the outside. Lots of flavor. I mean, I still want to talk to yeah, they're very crispy. Let me show you how crispy they are on the bottom. Mm. They're really crispy, and they're really pillowy. Oh, see, let me go this way. There we go. And they're really pillowy on the interior. These have a lovely texture. I think these are awesome. Mmm, mm, they are so good. Mm. Mama Z's in the house from Mama Z's Texas Kitchen. Hey, Mama Z. Z snap. Z snap. There we go. All right, great to see you, Mama Z. Mm. She's just in time to mm. see our taste testing. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us, Mama Z. It's always a pleasure mm. to have you here. Okay, let's see. I want to make sure I said hi to everybody, and I think so we good. did. They are so good. I know I could eat that whole plate all by myself. They are so supremely yummy. Mmm. Oh, my gosh. These are so good. Mm, 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 mm. So you could serve these. like We usually eat these as an appetizer. But you could serve these as a main course. You could put it together with marinara sauce and some pasta if you want to go that route. It could all, They would also be good served with rice. Or even if you want to keep the low-carb thing going on, how about cauliflower rice mm. with these? With mm. some marinara sauce, that would be super mm. yummy. These could also make a meatball sandwich really easily if you want to treat it that way. We just usually eat these like appetizers. And... You can just use them, eat them with your fingers. The other thing that I really like about these, if you want to use them mm -hmm. as an appetizer for a party, is that these taste good when they're warm from the oven, but they also taste good at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So it's the kind of thing that at our house, they never sit on the party platter very long before they're all gone. But even if they did, they'll still taste great two hours from now at room mm -hmm. temperature. And if you have any left over, which we rarely do, <laughs> but if you do, you can just put them in an airtight container, stash them in the fridge, and these actually will microwave back to life really nicely. On 50% power, just a few seconds is all it takes because you don't need to cook them anymore. You just need to warm them up. But these are super, super easy, as you saw, and really super fun to make, and they are so delicious. 
Uh, let's see. Sundays with Heart says she was thinking of putting these on shredded cabbage with sweet chili sauce. Ooh. Sweet chili sauce is in the cabinet right over there. Yeah, that is an excellent, excellent idea. I think that sounds super good. Okay, Madwood's on the way out. Madwood Barbecue, Bye. thank you for hanging out with us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to have you here, and we really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, and let's see. I think I said hi to everyone else now. So Terry's leaving. Let me see if I missed Terry. Okay, I missed a couple of people. The chat's going by a little quick here, so we'll do our best to keep up on it. So, okay, so... Um, Someone said goodbye. Oh, Mad. Okay, Mad would have to hit, head out. So, all right. And Suburban Barbecue is asking if Mama Z is all thought out because Mama Z's in Texas, where they've oh, yeah. been under snow yeah. and they haven't had any electricity How and they've had all kinds of problems. So we hope everything's okay with you down there. And Enzo, Enzo from Son of a Pizza Man is in yeah. the house. Hey, great to see you. We well, haven't, had, pizza we haven't seen Son of a Pizza Man for a while. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Mm. We've been making low-carb sausage balls. And the recipe for the low-carb sausage balls is in the description right below where you're watching this live stream, as is the ingredients for the Aquamist cocktail that we're drinking this afternoon. And not only is this an exquisite color, but it tastes so delicious. Mm. 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 If you like pineapple juice, and this isn't overwhelmingly pineapple. I mean, you can taste it, but it's not overwhelmingly pineapple. No, you get the gin and the yeah. rum and a little bit of a citrusy from the blue cursa. Yeah, it's really a super good combination. A depth of flavor. Okay, Mama Z says they're much better now. So, yay, we're glad to hear okay. that because yes. they were having a hard time in Texas the last week or two. Everything down there was really, really stressful mm. okay so let's see uh let's see um, chat's running by so okay ginger snap has to head out thank you so much Bye, for joining ginger. us ginger it was great having you here ginger snap and we really appreciate you taking your time out this afternoon to come and hang out with us and we look forward to seeing you again really soon oh my gosh that was so cool we met uh ginger snap earlier today when we were watching in the kitchen with Karen when Karen made clam chowder on her live stream this afternoon. Mm. That was supremely fun and she did an awesome job. So I've been gushing over Karen all afternoon, but we just think she's so cool and she has a great channel and she makes awesome food. So, and I think I also heard a rumor on her channel that they're going to be getting a new house with the bigger kitchen. Ooh. Because of course, if you do YouTube show, you need a bigger kitchen. We have a pretty decent sized kitchen, but the truth is we, what we really want, I, what I really want, I want two kitchens. And I've seen a lot of houses that actually have that available. You have your main kitchen that's part of your great room with the living room and dining space like what we have here. And then behind the kitchen is a separate the whole butler's other pantry, kitchen. Yeah. That, and, you know, which may or may not be completely outfitted with a whole other set of appliances, but a lot of times it is. So I think that's really cool. I would just absolutely love to have a second kitchen. Okay, Reese is on the way out the door. Hey, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Recipes with Reese channel. Be sure and check her out. She makes really fun stuff and she also has a gorgeous voice. I love listening to her talk. Thank you so much for being with us today, Risa. We really appreciate it. And Sunset says, say hi to Rula. <laughs> no worries, we'll say hi to Rula. Sunset has watched every single one of the videos that we've ever done. And so Sunset knows about the one video where I popped in with that big uh, bright red wig on and I no. talked like this. I was doing my best Russian accent. My eyes are blue, my dress is green, my hair is bright red. That's why I named that character Rula. <laughs> anyway. You have to be as old as we are to remember that song. Yeah, you, you won't know what we're talking about, but <laughs> you can look up, look up Rula Lenska. Back when Color TV was new. She did makeup. And I used to watch and black stuff. and white TV. Okay, just uh, just so you know, that. that's how long we've been around. <laughs> that's how old I am. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so Karen says she's seen uh, Butler pantries and secondary kitchens, but she wants to have a giant island so she has room for all the ingredients. And I know what she means because I've watched her live streams and I know how she likes to cook and she likes to have everything right around her. It's not dissimilar to how we like. We like to have our mise en place and our ingredients all prepped and all around On us our when home, we start cooking. Uh, shopping, what are those? Um, the looking shows. Sorry, word right in my head. 
oh, senior moment. You know, that's every time we forget but something, we, we just blame people it People looking for moment. kitchens or houses, we've seen some enormous islands. Like, whoa, like you could have a party on top of one island. I mean, the biggest one we've seen is in Christina's house. Mm. It's like nine by nine or something. It's huge. They had to seam together two giant pieces of granite we can't, we can to cross make the it. countertop. <laughs> Yeah, and it's big enough that people can dance on it. Yeah. Which actually works for me because you never know when you need a go-go boy at your party, right? Oh, wait, sorry. <sighs> anyway. That was okay. a long time ago. I don't know. We're not go-go boys. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, the second batch is almost ready to come out of the oven. Woo -woo. Oh, so we're going to hang out until the second batch is ready. Mmm. Mm. Oh, my gosh. These are so, so delicious. I could eat I these all afternoon. stop eating them. I know. These are really, really, but just, really it's, yummy. It's not just the flavor, it's the texture too. It's, it's crunchy and soft. It's just mm. okay. So Jerry Ellen wants to know what Karen is going to name her island. Because yeah, <laughs> island in the kitchen, it's gotta have a name. That makes sense to me. Fiji! Fiji, <laughs> Fiji, where is Fiji anyway? Mama Z says she wishes her bar was that big. <laughs> We, but we need a bigger bar. <laughs> we can we can serve a few drinks at our bar, but you know, fortunately, we don't have to serve thousands of people all at once because we can't really do that. But we used to watch Bar Rescue. Yeah, Bar Rescue when people that were behaving badly. <laughs> anyway, Everything Shakes has to cut out. Thank you for joining us, Everything Shakes. Be sure and check out the Everything Shakes channel because it is what it's named after. They make shakes and some really amazing combinations too. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate having you here today. Okay, so we've got one more batch. The last batch are still less than two minutes. We've got less than two minutes left to go, and we'll pop those babies out. These wow. are super. We ate almost all these already, and we're gonna eat the rest. Yeah. I'm sure because I am so hungry. I don't know if you guys do live feeds. Once we're done with the live feed, I'm always thirsty and hungry and ready to sit on I'm the couch sweaty. for an hour. Well, it's yeah. Today it's it's hot. it's, it's for the end of February in San Francisco, and it's seventy eight degrees outside. In San Francisco, rarely anyone ever has air conditioning, and then we've got the hot lights on, we've got the oven on, so it's a little bit warm and sweaty in here, but we're holding out okay. So okay, all right. Now what we've got going on is let me make sure I've checked in with the chat here. All right. Thank you so much for playing nicely, everyone in the chat room. It makes it so easy to moderate the show. Because we have lovely friends. We have lovely friends and lovely people that love to come out in the chat. So uh, let's see. Karen says it, it was 82 where she is. Whoa. I, I believe she's down. I know she's uh, within an hour's drive of San Francisco. Wow. Um, so she's probably on the peninsula. But yeah, it was it was hot all over the place. And when Joe was here earlier, she said down in Southern California, it was in the low 80s down there today as well. So this is definitely more like the kind of weather we'd expect to see in what, like May? Yeah, uh, not June. Well, no, because summer is well, in San Francisco. Foggy and cold. Well, sometimes it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, September. Mm -hmm. We get an Indian summer here almost all the time, and it's it's really yeah. Warm. This is definitely much more like. But I remember when when we moved here. At 1980, I remember going on the roof of the apartment I lived in, and it was December, and it was sunny. You could lay out. It was like, oh, my God. And I came from Boston, which was, like, covered in snow. Okay, and Jim from Suburban Barbecue says it's 79 in Houston, which that's a significant Yay! improvement over last week when it was, like, 79 yes. degrees below zero. God, oh nice and gosh. warm. So here comes the second batch. Let's boop, boop, boop. come in here for a quick here. little. There we go. There's our close-up cam. Whoa. So batch number two. Oh, they're slip sliding around. Slip sliding away. Those look lovely. So as you saw today, these are quite easy to put mm. together. They're very tasty. And they're you, delicious. Yes. You can use them as an appetizer, as a main course. I sometimes uh, we they can easily reheat if you don't eat them all. We we make a big batch, and I'll stick some in a container in the refrigerator. You can pull them down, put them in a bag, and take them on a hike with you. Yeah, because you can eat them at room temperature. So they still taste good even I mean, when they're not and hot. And once they're cooked, they hold together really well. Yeah, they do. They hold together really well. So it would definitely be something you could travel with. So, okay, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, we give you low-carb sausage balls. And mm. if you want to know the ingredients, 
if you missed the miss them during the show right below where you're watching this video in the description area will tell you every detail about all the ingredients there's only eight ingredients in the sausage balls and there are only four ingredients besides ice cubes in the aquamist cocktail and as you can see those are nice and toasty roasty and show them how nice and crispy the bottom got in the june oven that looks awesome perfection these are really super delicious mm. oh my gosh okay so uh oh jerry ellen says it's seven degrees below zero where she is yikes, yikes. Yes, our friends Maddie and Kiki from the Maddie and Kiki channel, it's, they were so far under snow, they couldn't get together to do their live stream because there wasn't any driving allowed in the municipality where they lived. So they were they had to do like, you know, a remote kind of thing going on. So, yeah, we know it's very nice and cold in some places. Okay, so, oh, thank you so much. We really appreciate that, Stephen and Jacqueline. We really appreciate your kind words. And Bobby, thank you so much. We really appreciate that also. So we hope you give this recipe a try. Mm -hmm. And if you do, be sure you take a picture, take a picture with your phone, put it on Instagram, tag us in your Instagram post so we can check out how your sausage balls came out. And if you try the Aquamist cocktail, be sure and do the same thing because we'd love to see how these treats worked out for you. So, oh my gosh, these cocktails are so good. Cheers. Thank you so much for working so hard today and for okay. doing all this work to make such a nice show. And thank you all so much for being here with us. We really appreciate it. Cheers, everyone. Mm. Mm. These are good. I'm going to have another one as soon as this one's all gone. Okay. Whoa. So, uh, Mr. Blue Toys says it's 52 degrees where he is. That's cold enough. Uh, and Jerry Ellen says she doesn't have an Instagram. Jerry Ellen, I rarely counsel people to open social media accounts, but I will tell you our experience is uh, we just went over 2,500 followers on Instagram. We actually have more Instagram followers than we do YouTube subscribers, go figure. But we found that the Instagram platform particularly is very receptive to those of us who are into food. And I think several of the other people in the chat right now who do have Instagram could probably tell you the same thing. Nice it's, people. It's very easy to set up, everyone's kind, we haven't had any problems there and if we do they have block features so you can get rid of negativeness if you need to do that so i would say uh give it a try because we found a lot of lovely friends on instagram and yes suburban barbecue does do instagram and while he does have a youtube account he does not actually have a youtube channel though he has thousands and thousands of subscribers hello Anyway, and uh, Sonia, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here today. We hope everything is well with you and your family where you are. Okay, so we are just about out of time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you guys being here today. So the Aquamist cocktail, low-carb sausage mm. balls. Just a reminder, recipes, ingredients are below in the and description. And these do go really well together, just FYI. Yeah, they do actually go really well together. <laughs> These would probably go with just about any kind of oh, God, cocktail yeah. you want to make, but they are so supremely yummy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put these on a plate and we're going to go head over to the living room and sit on the couch for a while and watch TV and watch YouTube and see what some of our other friends are cooking. So thank you so much for being here today. Brian, we really appreciate it. Uh, we, we're glad you enjoyed the kitchen. Next week, next Tuesday, we'll also be live at 4 p.m. Pacific. 7 p.m. Eastern, and next Tuesday, we'll be over there in the bar, and we'll be mixing not one, not three, not five, but seven, count them, seven green cocktails that would be appropriate for St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> or just anytime you want something that's a fabulous shade of green. So be sure and come and check us out. We would really love to have you. So next week, uh, oh, we're here for my lucky charm. Uh, we're going to be over in the bar. And just so you know, on the main page of our YouTube channel, the reminder for the next week's live stream is already up and available. So if you need a reminder, you can click the set reminder button on the live stream feed that's already set up. And then you'll get a notification on your phone about half an hour before the live stream starts. But you don't need to wait for notifications. We're doing every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern for from now through the end of march and we'll see what our numbers look like and what the feedback is from our audience some of our friends and fans prefer our new time time frame that we did for the last few months and some of us 
Some of our other friends prefer the later afternoon time frame that we're doing now at 4 p.m. So let us know if you have some feedback. We'd love to hear what you have to say about when you can watch our show because it's always really fun to have these live feeds going on. Thank you, Bobby. We had fun too. And we hope that we'll have more fun next week. We're going to be making a bunch of fabulous green cocktails, like I said, and we'll probably have a little something, something to snack. I'll on have to too. make up some canapes. Yeah. We'll have some canapes because you can't, you can't, we can't taste seven different cocktails and not have anything to eat because responsible drinkers eat while they're drinking and they never operate machinery or drive a car. Just so you know. Okay. What? what? <laughs> Okay, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, we really appreciate you all being here this afternoon. We're going to sign off today. So from San Francisco, California, I'm Mitch. I'm Philip, And we're the Kitchen Queers. Take care. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll Ciao, see you Bella. next week at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, where we'll be making lots and lots of green cocktails. <laughs> okay, we're going to go pig out on the rest of these sausage balls now. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mama Z. We love you, too. And we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Everyone, we really, really value your contributions to the chat and watching our show and providing your support. We couldn't do this without all of these lovely people out here. So thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week. Thank you. Love you all. Back soon. <laughs>